All right, so yesterday we did a little bit of introduction into conformational analysis, and we started with that warm-up problem, you remember? And we said, uh, is the molecule on the left the same as the molecule on the right? And we said, well, they're named the same, so they have to be, right? And we said the idea behind this is sigma bonds can rotate, flop around. So it's just the same molecule flopped around a little bit. And we started talking about these Newman projections, right, where you can transfer a 2D drawing into kind of a side-on drawing where you look down a carbon-carbon bond. And it's important to remember the carbon in the front, you actually see the intersection of the lines. The carbon in the back is represented with a circle, and then the carbons coming off that back carbon are coming off of that circle. It gets a little bit trickier when you start doing bond rotations. So what I like to do is color code things and then imagine turning it in 60 degree chunks. And so we did that with ethane. And we said that it's a lot like a turnstile. So you have this energetic barrier when you go from staggered to eclipsed back to staggered again. But in this example, staggered conformations are of equal energy. Eclipsed is just a little bit higher in energy. All right, so what we're gonna do today is kind of an offshoot of that. But this time we're gonna do butane. So how many carbons are in butane? Four, okay. So I'm gonna draw carbon, carbon, CH3, CH3. So that's my carbon backbone. I've got a proton kind of coming out of the board, one going into the board, another one going out, another one going in. And what we're gonna imagine doing is looking down the two, three bond in cyclobutane. So what I want you guys to do is to draw the Newman projection of this conformer, draw it clicked 60 degrees in one direction, another 60 degrees, another 60 degrees, and another 60 degrees. So this may take a little bit of work, but for the time being, let's imagine we're holding the front carbon static and we're only moving the back carbon 60 degrees. So let's start with the first confirmation. What two positions should be in the upward forks? Two hydrogens, right? We're looking down that bond, so two hydrogens right there. We should have a methyl group pointed down. So I'll write CH3. Some people might write that ME. It doesn't matter, you can write ME or CH3, whatever is easier. All right, and then in the back, we've got those three forks. What should be sticking straight up? The methyl group. And then the hydrogen should be sticking down. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is rotate the back carbon 60 degrees. So I'll give you a little bit of time to work on this, but what confirmation will it be if you rotate it 60 degrees? Eclipsed. So draw that structure to the best of your ability. Check with your neighbor and then do another rotation of 60 degrees and keep on doing that until you get all the way back to your starting material. So I'll give you a hint, there's five more remaining structures. So do you remember yesterday how I said, imagine grabbing onto one of these positions on that back carbon. This is now gonna rotate either direction. I'll just go clockwise, 60 degrees, and then this one will go clockwise, 60 degrees, and then this one will go clockwise, 60 degrees. I can show you guys a time-saving technique too. If we're only rotating the back carbon, I just redraw the front carbon the same for all of these. and then fill in the remaining gaps, right?
Yeah, exactly. So if you remember, with Eclipse, do you have to take some liberty and show them a little bit offset just so you can see the two atoms, but you'll assume that they are truly overlapped with one another. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you'll go from staggered to eclipse to staggered to eclipse to staggered all the way around. These are a little tricky to draw, which is why it's good practice. I think you got it? Yeah. A couple people? See a show of thumbs. All right. So let's go through this maybe as a class. I know some people might be a little stuck or struggling to fill in their eclipse confirmations. So let's go with the next one. So I'll fill in that back carbon circle. This methyl group is now going to be eclipsed with that rightmost proton, right? Because we clicked it 30 degrees right. And then down here, we must have a hydrogen. And then over here, we must have another hydrogen. So these are eclipsed, right? We agree on that? Okay, so now same sort of strategy. This methyl group in the back, I'm gonna pull 60 degrees this way. This methyl group, or sorry, proton goes 60 degrees. And then this proton will go 60 degrees. This one's a lot easier to draw. <laughs> All right, what should be sticking straight up now? Hydrogen, proton. CH3 should be down here, and the proton should be down here. All right, another click over. Whoa, that's orange. Click this one over. This methyl group will go over. This proton will go over. So we'll fill this in. Okay, so this time we now have two protons that are eclipsed. Now we've got two methyl groups that are kind of hitting one another. I'm going to show this a little bit clearer. All right, and then last but not least, we've got this proton right there. So again, another eclipsed one. We can grab this proton, 60 degrees. This methyl group, pull it 60 degrees. This proton, pull it 60 degrees. Again, we're going to an easier confirmation, the staggered ones. Now we've got a proton in that right corner. The methyl group should be over here. And we should have a proton sticking up. Is everybody following along so far? I know this gets kind of repetitive. Then we'll pull this proton 60 degrees, this methyl group 60 degrees, this proton 60 degrees. Do our eclipse confirmation again. And then you can imagine if you take this methyl group Pull it 60 degrees this way, this proton 60 degrees, and this proton 60 degrees, you end up right back at your starting product. Make sense? All right, now the million dollar question. I want you guys to rank these from most stable to least stable, and then discuss it with your neighbor. Easiest approach is first identify what's clearly the most stable and then identify what's clearly the least stable, and then work your way into the middle. I'll give you another hint, too. There may be a tie. Who thinks they've got it? All right, does anybody want to help me identify the most stable one? Hopefully everybody can get this one. What do you think? Very first one? Why the very first one? Exactly. So your answer was the methyl groups are as far apart from one another as possible. That's ideal because they take up a lot of space. They don't want to be bumping into one another. So this confirmation in the top is called staggered anti-peri planar. Well, staggered's easy, right? And then anti means opposite, and peri planar means they're in the same plane but opposite, right? So I want you to know what it means. You don't need to memorize it. So that one's definitely the most stable. So I'm just going to go ahead and write a number one right here. All right, which one is least stable? Who wants to help me with that? 
What do you think, Zach? Uh, the bottom right. Bottom right. Why the bottom right? Just because they're eclipsed and they're going to be as close to each other as possible. Yeah, so it's kind of the opposite situation where we're forcing the two methyl groups to basically be overlapping one another. So if we look at this one, this would be called eclipsed. And this time we're going to call it sin because they're on the same side. Periplanar. So again, those two methyl groups are in the same plane this time. And I'm just going to write a least stable down here. All right. Now the next question. Who thinks they know the second most stable conformation? Does anybody want to help me? What do you think, Nikki? Um, the one in the top corner and then also the middle bottom one are equally Okay, so you're saying top right corner and middle bottom, yeah. right? Okay, so let's take a look at that one, for example. These two right here and here are staggered, right? We said staggered is pretty much always going to be more stable than eclipsed, right? So that puts them next in line. Are they tied? Why? Because the methyl groups are isomorphic. Equally close to each other. Yeah, the methyl groups are equally as close to one another in each of those conformations. So I'm definitely going to put a 2 here. And I'm going to put a 2 here. And I would say those are tied at second place. And what these are called are just typical staggered. <laughs> But there is a new term I want to introduce you guys to. These methyl groups aren't as happy as the first one because they are kind of brushing up against one another in that yellow area. And this is called a Gauche interaction. It's a little bit destabilizing, but not as bad as being eclipsed, right? Because they are slightly offset from one another. So that one has a Gauche interaction. This one also has a Gauche interaction. All right, so we've identified most stable, least stable, second most stable. That leaves us with third most stable. Do you think it's going to be a tie between the remaining two? Yeah. I would say it's going to be a tie between the remaining two. So I'd say three, three. That means our least stable is going to be fourth, right? And if we look at these ones, we don't need any fancy names for them. They're just called eclipsed. Clear as mud? Yep. Mm -hmm. You always put it towards the right. Does it matter since really they're just in front of each other and kind of show the That's a good question. So when you draw the eclipse conformation, you're asking, do they always need to be offset slightly to the right? Yeah. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. So if one of them's offset to the right, all of them need to be offset to the right. If you offset it slightly to the left, they all need to be offset to the left. Otherwise, it looks kind of funny. Okay. And it's as simple as that, yeah. Yep. Um, I just... Uh, not exactly. So if you look at the two that are tied as three, they're assumed to be eclipsed, right? It's tough to draw them as perfectly eclipsed. Oh, oh eclipsed. But because they are eclipsed, they are going to be tied. Oh, okay. Good question. Tied and, um, and like in the lower places. Like mm -hmm. Exactly. So they're going to be tied at third place for the top, middle, and then lower left. Okay, so now it gets a little tricky. We've got to draw that diagram, so you remember when we did this with the other one, is pretty straightforward. Now we've got to make a diagram for butane. So I'm going to start out making a chart down here, and then we'll refer back to our notes. 
And I'll say, all right, energy is on this axis, and then rotation is on this axis. And then I'm just going to put our least stable at the top in the middle, right? So which conformation was that going to be? We had a special new name for it. Yeah, Eclipse Sin Periplanar. So if I redraw that really quick, we said it was going to be that, whoop, that one on the bottom. You don't have to redraw it if you want. You can just label it A, B, and C. But it's the one where those two methyl groups are running into one another, right? And we said that those two methyl groups don't like being close to one another, so this is going to be super high in energy. All right? And then what we want to do is take a look at the, the next conformers. So what was most stable again? The first one, the staggered antiperiplanar. So I'm going to put that bookended on the sides down here and down here. And we said this was the nice one where we had the methyl group up in the back and down in the front. And we've got two hydrogens right there and there. And then our other methyl group was anti to that. So really quick, I'll just redraw draw that again over here. All right, so the next one that we're going to must be an eclipse confirmation. So it's got to have some sort of bump like this. So that's our eclipse confirmer. And if we look at this one, I'm again going to keep the one in the front static. And I'm going to move the back one. Okay, so the back one now has a methyl group over here, hydrogen and hydrogen, but can you see how that's eclipsed there? So it's going to be a higher energy hump. And then we're going to go down to a well, and I'm going to put that well about right here. And this one's the new staggered conformation. So I've got two hydrogens up, that methyl group down, but now this methyl group's here. But we said that it's less stable than the one on the far left, and why is that? What interaction does this one have? Gauche. We said that Gauche, whoa, this Gauche interaction is where those two methyl groups, the bulkiest groups, are close to one another in space. And so it's slightly less stable than the one on that far left. All right, and then if we keep on rotating it, we're going to go up to that high energy conformer, that's that sin periplanar. And then we're going to go right back down to the other Gauche interaction. But this time our methyl group is just going to be on the opposite side. And we said it's going to be equal in energy, right? Because the methyl groups are equal proximity for the right-hand one and the left-hand one. And then last but not least, we've got to fill in this remaining eclipse confirmation. Okay, so this time we've got a CH3. Oh, let me move this a bit. and then proton and proton. Does that make sense? These energetic barriers for the rotation of butane aren't created equal like we saw um, in ethane. In ethane, all the barriers were equal. This one, you've got harder barriers to overcome than others. The other thing, too, is to kind of keep track of these energetic barriers. This hump right here is about 3.6 kcals. The hump between our starting and the other eclipse one is about 
kcals, and I should say kcals per mole. And my general rule of thumb is that molecules will rotate freely as long as that barrier remains below 20 kcals per mole. If the barrier is larger than 20 kcals per mole, there's not enough energy in the room to actually help that bond rotate freely. So rule of thumb, rotation occurs freely if the barrier is less than 20 kcals per mole. So in this case, at room temperature, butane is going to spin around like a fan. It's still going to have some energetic humps it has to get over, but 6 kcals per mole really isn't much in the grand scheme of things. Does that make sense? Yep? So now, even though they can spin freely just due to the random collisions and like the heat in the room in general, yep. um, the weak intermolecular forces that are from a carbon hydrogen bond, does that play into making them stick to one formation when they're all next to each other, or do they just all kind of throw each other off and rotate? It's all fairly random um, at this temperature. If you do cool it down, so let's say you get a sample and you start cooling it in liquid hydrogen, for example, something very, very cold, and get it close to absolute zero, it's not going to want to go past that large hump. In fact, it'll probably get stuck in the lowest energy well, and you'll only observe that anti-periplanar conformation. So you actually can do those experiments, and chemists have done them, to trap them in various spots along this energy diagram. All right, I've got good news. I don't expect you guys to draw these maps on exams because they take a lot of time. And for the most part, I'm not that interested in eclipse conformations because they're not the major conformers, right? I'm more interested in those energetic wells because those are the most important conformations. So I'll give you guys another small project, and I want you guys to do this with a partner if possible. So let's imagine this bond, or this molecule I should say, and we are looking down the 3-4 carbon, carbon bond, right, with that red eyeball. Draw all three staggered conformations, and then determine which is the most stable, second most stable, and third most stable. And I'll show you guys a good hint, too. What would this substituent be called? An ethyl group. So I'm just going to abbreviate that ET. What about this one? It's another ethyl group. So I'll just abbreviate that ET. OK, so if we're looking at this front carbon, what should be in the up position? The ethyl group, right? Because our eyeball is kind of at an angle. So that ethyl group sticking up. What should be to the lower right-hand side? The methyl. The methyl? Okay. So I'll just write ME. You can write CH3 if you prefer that. That means that hydrogen that's dashed should be going to the left, right? Okay, back carbon. What should be sticking in the two upward positions? Two hydrogens. And then down, the ethyl. OK, again, we're going to rotate. I'm going to keep the front carbon the same. We want to rotate the back carbon. And then fill in the gaps on here. So for example, this time we're not doing 60 degrees, we're doing a full 120. Okay, what should be in the top right-hand corner? 
Hydrogen. What should be on the bottom? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. <laughs> what should be in the top left? Ethyl. Ethyl. Okay. You can rotate it counterclockwise if you want to. It doesn't really matter. All right. Same sort of thing. We're going to grab this back one, rotate it down. Okay. Now what should be in the top right-hand corner? Ethyl. What should be in the bottom? All right. Which one's going to be the most stable? First one, why? Yeah, if we look at the largest substituents, it's the ethyl groups, right? The ethyl groups, therefore, should be as far apart from one another as possible. So this would be the most stable. All right, brings us to the next question. Which one's going to be the least stable? Ooh, we've got a little bit of a tricky situation, right? You see how the second and third one have ethyl groups next to each other? So how do we break that tie? Yeah, we ideally want to minimize these Gauss interactions, right? So if we look at the first one, that's an ethyl methyl. It's not ideal, but it's, it's okay, I suppose. If we look at the next one, we've got an ethyl ethyl, not so good. If we look at this one, ethyl ethyl and an ethyl methyl. So which one's going to be second? Uh, the middle one. All right, so the middle one will be second most. It does have a gauche, but it's worse than the gauche interaction in the most stable conformer. And then the last one has two gauche interactions. That's really unstable. So this will be least stable. This is a common question that shows up on exams. I will give you a bond line structure and I'll say draw all three staggered conformations and determine which one's most stable, second most stable, and third most stable. So this is a good thing to practice. If you are having trouble with it, I really recommend um, coming to see me. And then if you have a model kit, try actually making the model and rotating the back carbon um, 20, or 120 degrees at a time. All right. Remember to watch the video for the pod and I'll see some of you in lab.